Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build Facing Worlds Part 1. Now I hear you saying already, what's Facing Worlds? It's not a building. Well, let me get to that in just a sec. But our journey starts in space. Not outer space, but empty space. To make this map, what we've had to do is take a world and strip it completely bare of all the blocks. And that small block there is just the one block left remaining. One wool block with a torch on top of it. Now I've wanted to do a PvP map for Minecraft again since uh, Crown Conquest was so much fun and I want to do it in Tech It and I wanted to have a bit of a first person shooter angle because there's lots of guns in Tech It, especially in the Balkans weapons mod. So what Facing Worlds is, is an Unreal Tournament map you see here from the very first Unreal Tournament game and games since then, Unreal Tournament and others, have tried to mimic and copy the style of Facing Worlds, this classic two fortresses looking at each other across a vast empty space connected by two bridges. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to recreate facing worlds in Minecraft. So what we're doing is we're coming up from the wool block and to make the place where we're going to actually build the bases, we're going to have to terraform a large section of land. So we've come up here with stone, equipped world edit, and we're using spherical brushes set to stone to create this kind of four-legged spider thing. Now it's got a peak in the middle and come down slowly, sloped, at either side. And those two prongs will jut out and connect with large upside down pyramids, chunks of asteroid, where we're going to build our two bases. And I was thinking initially that the two bases would be red and blue, but then I had another better idea. Since this is a tech -it related PvP map, why not have Honeydew Inc. on one side and then Sipsco Industries on the other side? So that's what we're going to do. You see me here dashing around, I put in the initial kind of brush with the stone, but then once that's in I had to go around and level off the tops of the slope to make it more even and make it a more usable environment for a PvP map. If you're going to be running up and down these slopes, they need to be quite big and, uh, and quite forgiving. And once the prongs were in place, I got the brush out again and started to build a kind of rough circle that the prongs connect to. Out of stone, of course, and you see me here misclicking every now and again, plopping down brushes and spheres into the void, but then I go and clean those up with a, with a sphere brush set to air. Dashing around to put down torches so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now there's a lot of mobs here because I didn't turn off monsters, and uh, that got a bit tricky eventually because I was trying to put down blocks in places and there'd be a skeleton or a creeper standing there, I'd accidentally hit a creeper, he'd aggro me, come after me and try and explode and, and it would wreck the map. So once the area was filled in with the brushes, I set about using world edit because I got a little bit tired of filling in all the potholes to fill in bulk areas with stone and then I went in and filled the individual areas with stone blocks. And that's where we are so far. one piece of land to build the base on complete. And now I know the style of which I'm going to do it, I can come over to the other side of the spider prongs and build the second area of land where we're going to put our base. Now stone is very ugly and it's not what we're going to keep. The stone is just there as a skeleton. What we're going to use is the overlay command once we're done building, once we're done terraforming to give the area a nice green covering. So I've come over to the other side, and again, with the spherical stone brush, filling in this kind of upside down filled in bowl. Now with a map like this, it's somewhat important to make sure that the two bases are not quite symmetrical because that makes for a boring map, but they have to be very, very similar because otherwise there could be an unfair advantage given to one base. And when that happens, well, we've all been to Alterac Valley and we know how it is to kind of have to get over that bridge at, uh, at Dunbalda. So again, I got lazy. I came out there with World Edit with the prongs and cleared off a, a large section across the top to make sure the land was level. And then went about filling in the small pockets 
with stone blocks. And there we have it. Then it was time to use the overlay command and add a layer of grass, as you can see here, on top of the stone. Unfortunately, I missed out a small section of one of the islands. So as you can see, that slime flops its way off the, off, the, uh, off the island. And I came back here manually and filled in the top of this with a little bit of mud. The grass will eventually grow across it, so there was no point in using grass blocks. Now, to mix it up a little bit, I decided that I'd add a bridge and a small tunnel section. Perhaps with a trap? I haven't decided yet, but you see me here using wood blocks, iron fence grates, and stone brick steps and stone bricks to make a kind of tunnel that will go through the section of land in the middle of our facing worlds map. And then you see me on the right there, building up with stone bricks a small kind of path. And then digging through the mountainous kind of terrain here to come out the other side and complete the tunnel. It's almost symmetrical, near enough. And the wood stretches out across to the side of the, uh, of the island here. And this offers another shortcut. Now, the main idea for this map is, because it's CTF, there are no flags in Minecraft, so what we're going to do is, we're going to have wires. Now, each base is going to have three different coloured wires. Now, the objective is to get to the enemy base, pick up some wires, get back with those wires, and once you have all three wires, you can plug them in, and that will set off the nuke system that will explode their base. And that's how we're going to do it. It's not capture the flag, it's capture the wires. And once you have all the wires, you win the game, and you explode their base. Now to mix it up again, I've added a small castle along the middle of the island here. Now because Tekkit adds a few very powerful long-range weapons, bows are very powerful, the muskets are incredibly powerful, and the mining lasers too are, are pretty deadly, we need a little bit of uh, differentiation along the middle because if it's too open plan, if there's too much flat ground, open space, then ranged weapons are going to dominate and all the melee weapons that Minecraft has so many of are going to be all but useless. So this castle and that tunnel and a few other things that we're going to put in, maybe some ruins and some other blocks, are going to act as cover. So you can take cover from all the, from all the ranged fire that's going to be going on and it'll mean that melee weapons will have a little bit more punch, a little bit more purpose. They'll actually have a use in this map. So I come down the other side of the prongs with the stone brick and the stone brick steps and the cracked stone brick to build a path towards what will become our first base. Now I'm using ruby blocks here and wooden blocks to map out a square. Once I was happy with the size, I cut and paste it into a better location that was more symmetrical. And then I thought about what materials I was gonna build the actual base out of. And in the end, I decided on marble bricks and stone bricks. And then I plot down the foundations of the entrance and the side struts. I make a start with the stone bricks on the three back and side walls of the base, and then bring the marble brick wall up to the same level being careful not to cover up the entrance. And there we go. That's all we've done so far. We've got the foundations for the first base. I'm not sure whether that's going to be Honeydew Inc. or Sipsco, but stay tuned. Come across here and we've got the tunnel underneath the map, the castle section, and the cracked stone brick path. Now this is far from finished. We're going to have to go around and decorate with flowers, perhaps shrubberies, trees maybe. We'll have a think and we'll have a play around and we'll make sure we come up with a map that's both pleasantly looking, aesthetically pleasing, and a map that's fair. So that was part one, Facing Worlds. Stay tuned because next week we're going to be building more of our Facing Worlds map. I'm not sure how long it's going to take us to build this map, but I can't wait to get it finished because once it is, we'll be able to play it and I can't wait to ice Duncan and the rest of those jokers in a PvP setting. So I've been Stjin. Hit like and favourite if you want to see more and take care. <laughs>